Moved by Councillor Morial, second by Councillor Delorier, resolve the agenda <coughs> for the April 3rd regular meeting be received. Discussion? All in favor? The motion moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Delorier, resolve the minutes of the March 20th, 2018 regular meeting council be adopted as received. Discussion? In favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay. <clears throat> I call the public hearing to order on variation application 1, 2018. The purpose of the hearing is to hear representation for or against the following variation application to vary the minimum setback distance from 25 feet to 1 feet 2 inches to allow construction of an outside deck on the south side of the condos at 9 to 12 on the property described in parcel A, plan 6 to 103 505 Kelsey Trail. The requirements of section 169 of the planning act have been adhered to. I request any persons making representation to the hearing state their name and their civic address. Any communication on this at all, Chief? No. Council's familiar with what it is? Tell me. It's at the Riverview condos. <coughs> Upon hearing all present, I adjourn the hearing. We have the motion moved by Councillor Morial, second by Councillor Delorier. Resolve a variation order application 1 2018 to vary the minimum setback distance from 25 feet to 1 feet 2 inches to allow the construction of an outside deck on the south side of condos number 9 to 12 on the property located at the parcel A plan 62103 be approved. And further be it resolved that this approval is subject to the approval of all other required permits. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, we had the uh, correspondence, the letter uh, regarding the crosswalk or, or the concern about people crossing uh, Main Street in the area of 10th Avenue North and the Nelson Hotel. Do you have any comments on that, Derek? Uh, just, uh, I know this has gone through email and I just replied with uh, the town's inquiry to MIT and who else? Uh, RCMP on a, on a crosswalk at that intersection and they responded that due to the proximity of the the intersection at 9th having uh, lights on it, they figured it would, it would cause further uh, chances of an accident. But they did not recommend a, a crosswalk on 10th. <clears throat> Another discussion? So right now, they can come out of the uh, primary care clinic, turn to the right, walk up to the light, the light turns green, they can walk across, walk down 50 feet, and go into the hospital. Yeah. Okay, that's good enough for me. But they're coming out of the Nelson Hotel. Right. Yep. Yeah. Which is 20 feet over to the left of the primary care clinic. Yeah, but most people won't go down to the lights. They all scoot across the street. I mean, it's their problem, but I'm just saying that's what's happening. Councillor Jacobson. So Derek, you said that MIT said that, or they you think that they would not allow for a crosswalk there because of the lights on 9th? We have it made. We just have it in writing that MIT and the RCMP believe that there'd be further issues if there was, like due to the control oh. at 9th, there'd be issues with a crosswalk is at 10th. Is that distance? equal to the distance between most of our blocks down Main Street here? Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's no issues with control apparatuses at any of our downtown crossings. So right. what's the difference? I guess they didn't they didn't give a reasoning. They just feel with just a crosswalk with no lights, I'm guessing. And I think that's a total guess. They didn't give a reasoning for why they think it would add more harm, but uh, that is what it states. Councilor Delorean, do you have a comment? Mm -hmm. No, please. Councilor Morio. It's just, if you go from the Nelson Hotel to the 9th, you have to 
to access the front doors of the hospital, you have to come all the way back to the main entrance where the sidewalk goes in. Because there is, from the emergency entrance, there is no sidewalk from that intersection. You have to come back going east to the main entrance of the hospital where the public sidewalk brings you into the facility. So. Yeah, I know we've, like even as much as two or three years ago, I believe we inquired on, on a crosswalk at 11th. And that was due to, I believe, families trying to get to the department store and the grocery store. Like, I don't know, we'll have, what do we do? We've had inquiries on 10th, we've had inquiries on 11th. If we are going to ask for a crosswalk from MIT, I believe we should pick one. <coughs> what is the wish of council? I think they're right. If we are going to ask one, it should be further to the east. I'm not convinced that we need one at all. But but if you look, the last crosswalk is at ninth, and then there isn't another crosswalk all the way to the subway turnoff. There's no legal way to cross the street as a pedestrian that whole length. Eleventh would be far more, or even twelfth. Twelfth. Yeah. So pursue, pursue would those be, ones uh, first. I disagree. Being somebody that likes to drive with oat impediment, I'd let, I don't know if you're... You're talking about the safety of pedestrians. Well, can we have Derek again contact the RCMP and MIT about... Uh, from the 11th to 12th, there's no sidewalk no. on the south side. I think a waste of time. 10th, if you're going to put it anywhere, I'd put it on 10th. Because that's where I always see people walking across there, coming from the hospital, yeah, coming in. There's lost that cross at 11th at the end. I think, I think one anywhere is, is really not going to do anything. People are going to jaywalk across there anyways. Yeah, they are. It's going to be a waste of money. Well, if there's a choice to be made on which street, I vote for 10th. But if we're not going to do anything, then that's fine too. Like you say, there is no sidewalk to connect to. That could easily be fixed too. I'm not that easy. Sidewalks aren't cheap. What do you wish to do? What's that do we want to ask MIT again? That was in 2007, our, our letter. Okay. So we Maybe can. things have changed in 11 years. Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. Maybe say 11th, 9th, 10th, <coughs> 11th, what would they you. recommend? Concerts. So what kind of cross crosswalk, I guess, were we looking at in 2007? Just just the lines, or is it like controlled with lights, or is it controlled with... Well, I believe we inquired, uh, like, not what's on, like, 8th right now. is just two big white pedestrian signs and the lines on the road. I believe if we do anything, it would be smart to do the what's at 9th and... First Street, or sorry, Second Street North, yeah. with actually stopping traffic. Taylor School. Flashing. I guess Taylor School. Yeah, Taylor School. I agree. <coughs> it's just too. That's a long stretch, and there's a little high speeds there just to throw up a white sign. Councilor Stockle. I wonder if that would alleviate some of that traffic there, because once you have people crossing, maybe people can move across. I know I've been stuck in that intersection a few times where it gets a little busy at times and I guess if somebody's walking across then somebody coming out of the hospital could go Gives you a chance. east uh, without the oncoming traffic coming or somebody facing south could go east because there should be nobody in the lane and people should be crossing. I don't know. We can write a letter to MIT yeah. and the yeah. RCMP for think it's right. recommendations. Okay, we'll do that. Uh, we have the motion moved by Councilor Deloria, second by Councilor Morio. Resolve Council of Town of Swan River authorize Blaine Healy to hunt crows within the town boundaries as a deterrent to West Nile virus and to be reimbursed as per Schedule A. Discussion? Councilor White. Uh, how do you, did you bring the crow in? Does any shoot them? How do you know how many crows you shot? It's an honor system. Pardon? Honor system. Okay. You want to take pictures of them. All in favor? <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, the next one is email from the high school rodeo people asking uh, picnic tables, an extra dumpster. Council had an opportunity to look at that request, Councilor Deloria. When the exit society gets the extra dumpster at uh, ro rotary or extra pickup at rodeo time, they pay for that, right? Yeah. But, you know, my 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 thoughts on it is we did it la last year, and I think I may have been opposed to it then too. But but if we if we're giving this stuff away, we may as well give it away to everybody. If we're if we're gonna pick and choose who we give it to, what's the point of having prices for these things? Council Sackler. I was just going to uh, ask what we had done last year. Was it the same, exactly the same thing? I agree with Councillor Delory. I know it's hard to pick and choose. I, I always struggle with who should get it, who shouldn't. In all our minds, probably everybody would could find some different organization that could benefit from it. But you know, we're going to have the next resolution on the table is going to come from another well-deserving uh, community or a group that uh, I feel should get same. Uh, where do you start and where do you stop? I, and I mean, we've got to keep in mind, nothing we do is for a profit right now. Everything, even our rental rates are, are subsidized as they are. We're, we don't we don't make anything off of those. It pays the costs. So. I'm, not, I'm not in favor. Okay. So we have the resolution moved by Council Delorey, second by Council Memorial. So the town will provide picnic tables, tables and chairs, a uh, large tent, an extra dumpster to the Swan Valley High School Rodeo Committee for their rodeos held in the Ag Society Fairgrounds May 12th and 13th and June 8th, 9th and 10th. Any other discussion? Councillor White and then Councillor Sapple. <coughs> and we gave them all this, this, that last year? Is there the possibility of them applying for a grant to do something like that? <coughs> Councillor Sackler. I do agree with Councillor Delorier, but I, I do support this event. I, I still think it's a great event. Uh, <laughs> I, I struggle with it. Who do you give it to and who do you don't? Uh, we, we did it last year. I still think it's a great event. It's themed with our Ag Society. Our rodeo is one of our biggest events. I was last year not a special event for them too? Weren't they hosting provincials or something? No, they're like hosting it? the same thing as they did last year. It's a two-year term, I believe. They get the high school rodeo finale, like the finals, oh, okay. their graduation. But when you tender it, it's for a two-year period. Oh, so okay. it's like their graduation, their rodeo. It's exactly the same as last year. It's just a two-year term. So will it be here next year? I doubt it, but I don't know. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Okay. Next is the Emergency Measures Coordinator Agreement discussion. We have the motion moved by Councilor Deloria, second by Councilor Morrow, resolve that the CAO, uh, CAO be authorized to sign the agreement for emergency coordinator services with Ken Kirkpatrick as per Schedule A. Discussion, Councilor Sackle and then Councilor White. Has anything changed from before? No. Councilor White. I think it's uh, appropriate that maybe we ask uh, the MO coordinator, I think, did a wonderful job to come up, sit down and, and explain what all those things mean to him and to us. And I'm not sure I understand completely what all those points mean and are they being fulfilled. Any other discussion? All in favor of the resolution? It's carried. We have the motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor Delore. Resolve the town provide the use of the picnic tables to the Minnetonas 4 H Beef Club for the Swan Valley 4 H Beef Show and Sale held on the Ag Society grounds May 26th. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? 
carrot. Okay, we have a superintendent works report. Uh, questions to Derek on his report. Councillor Jacobson. Derek, um, I don't think it's in here, but some of the grates that we know about, uh, the storm sewer grates, are falling through in some areas that we have troubles with. Just uh, curious, can we not maybe just weld them? Uh, yeah, I discussed Especially that. Especially the problem ones, like just weld them, because it, it's probably not very often that you go into them, right? Yep. And that's what we're, I've talked to Josh on that, and that's what we're going to do once all the ice clears away. We'll look at all the problem ones, and, and we'll just have a spot well yeah. that can be busted with a sledge. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions to Derek? How's the uh, UV uh, situation at the uh, water treatment plant? Is that going to affect our budget? Uh, no, no, it'll, we always put a bit of extra in the treatment plant and that should cover that it's basically parts okay. it's a sensor okay the uh last year in 2017 we had budget flags for town office i know you purchased some or it laid we, like they we've got the poles everything we've got everything it's just not installed oh, okay. so that'll just be our so that'll be getting done shortly yeah. <clears throat> councillor sackle uh just any new updates with the well site upgrade i just see it's it's on here but is there anything that Changed or anything that's progressing, or we're waiting on weather. Or no, we're waiting on the crew is uh, leaving for Newfoundland. I think the end of this week, and they get three weeks in Newfoundland. When they come back, they're they're coming here. Do we want them after they've been in? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's that's basically it. Is our drillers are going to be here after their three week breakup or whatever they call it, and. Uh, where to go? That's right. Good. <laughs> Any other questions? So we have the motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor Delore. Result of Superintendent Works report be received. Discussion? All in favor? Uh, Council has a copy of the Fire Department report. Any questions to Julie on the Fire Department report? If not, we have the resolution moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor Glory, result of the fire department report from March 2018 be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Okay, also you have uh, three sets of management meeting minutes. Any questions to Julie or to Derek on the management <coughs> meeting minutes? My, the last thing on my agenda is the fire department report. Okay, so we're to members report. Councilor okay. Sackles, do you have anything to report? Not too much uh, to report. Another budget meeting last night. It's coming closer to uh, to a close. I think we're getting close. There's always some last minute things that we're trying to change and always working on the budget to, to try to bring it down and to not have to raise taxes any more than we would like to. Um, it's always a critical time for us. I think it's probably one of the hardest parts of being on council is trying to come up with a budget and trying to keep all the services and uh, keep everything going in the town. Maybe the only other thing I had was on the 21st there we had the Swan Valley Rise meeting. Just some more discussion on where we're going, uh, what's going to happen in the future. There's a few municipalities that don't feel that we should finish the finish what we're doing. I guess we've been working on a, a tourism plan, and it's it's getting close, but I think it needs probably almost another year to finalize. And I don't always agree with the direction, but we will uh, see where that goes. That's it for me. Councilor Friesen. I was also at the budget meeting last night. And, um, I really have nothing other than fun things to report. I went to the fair. Um, that's what it? Fair. Fair? The fair in Brandon. Oh. Councillor Morgan. Mr. Fair. Um, on the 22nd, I had a Valley in the Mountains uh, meeting. Um, they updated us on a few things. Um, 
they're work, currently working on the new calendar for the uh, tourist guide that uh, we got published last year to uh, update the dates for this year. Um, they're also looking for any information that anybody can provide um, for tourist ideas. They're, they're going ahead with uh, some type of like tank card to put on restaurant tables to give people uh, quick ideas of what you can do in the valley on the spur of the moment and also what you can do in the valley as a pre-plan and they're looking for any suggestions of what to put on those cards for like when someone comes into the valley um, then they got two hours to kill what can you do or if you're here for the weekend what can you do so if you got any suggestions whatever just send them to me and I can uh, pass them on to the, the girls there um, and then last night uh, we had uh, another round of budget uh, talks very tight um, not much to work with, but like Council Sackle said, um, it's very tight. Um, try not to raise the taxes any more than what we need to. Um, but people want services, so it's deciding as to what do we want and what do we want to pay for, and move from there. Councilor Delory. Um, not much to report, but can we get, can Council get a report from Patty regarding uh, the features at the pool. I've gone there often and more and more of them are off more and more and I know some of them they make too much noise or there's some of them may be broken I, I'm not sure but what the status of each of them is and if when they get used like even even some of the, some of the little bubbles that would come up from the floor in the little pot area I haven't seen that on in probably over a year at least so if we can get a report on all the different features, which ones work, which ones don't, which ones they run, which ones they don't, and why they don't run them. That would be good. Um, other than that, I have nothing really to report. Councilor Jacobs. Uh, I've been, you know, budget uh, that we've been working on here is coming to uh, close to an end, or we'll be able to present it to the public. Um, I also had an opportunity to meet up with uh, Rick Lindley at his 8th Avenue condo uh, project there and uh, quite an interesting concept of what he's bringing forth to the town but uh, we'll all have an opportunity I'm guessing when they do an open house there to see it but uh, once that comes to be I encourage you all to go and have a look at it because it's quite an interesting project. Thanks. Councillor White. Uh, just a, <clears throat> a couple of points. I met with a couple of constituents downtown the other day and I don't think the message is getting out to the community that I think council believes that we like this spring park. We think it's a wonderful idea. We've given the land to it. But at the moment, with the economic times as they are, we're not sure where it will go. But it's not to say that I for sure and I believe the majority of us don't really like that idea. We do like it. That's my feeling. And I spent a little time on the phone playing tag with Sean Finn, the Executive Vice President of Canadian National Railway. He's been in connection with uh, Derek. And uh, very quickly, within 10 minutes of the first letter out, and three or four have taken place, and they've been in touch with you, and hopefully we'll get our flooding issues looked after down south of us here. And uh, March uh, 23rd, PMH uh, met with PMH, and again, they have the same issues uh, as usual, concerned about funding and anesthesis. And they are meeting in Swan River, the whole board, on April the 25th. If any of the uh, council wanted to attend or make a proposal to PMH, I'm sure I could arrange to make that happen. And I would encourage you to do that. I had some discussions earlier about progress at the pool. And that's about it for now. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Councilor DeLorean. Just one question for Drew. Do you know when the deadline is for resolutions for d d d uh, AMN district meetings? Just for does anybody? Yeah, we just, got a, we just got a reminder. Yeah, because I have a resolution that I want to. So, so I'll bring it for next council meeting. On my report, pretty much everything else has been covered. Uh, however, uh, we, we are aware, and the community for the most part is aware of the proposal that's been put together uh, collaboratively on a CT scanner for um, Swan Valley Health Facilities. Uh, I've made inquiries to the Minister of Health and he's recognized that uh, uh, we've made the inquiry and they're working on setting up a time when we can meet directly with the Minister of Health and make the proposal directly to the Minister of Health on how we can improve health services in the Swan Valley and actually save Manitoba Health and Parkland Region Health Authority money. So that's 
they figured maybe within the next three weeks or so that we would get an audience with the Minister of Health to make that presentation. Another thing that we would present at that time is a proposal on the 52nd parallel for air transport for our patients. As people are aware now, um, on the east side of the province they can get air transport for uh, ambulance person health uh, for and on this side of the lake, it's the 53rd parallel. So we're asking them to uh, make it the 52nd parallel right across the province. And uh, if they're worried about a big uh, increased number, the only health facility would affect would be Swan Rivers. And that's all that I have. Julie, do you have anything? <coughs> Yeah, I attended the budget meeting last night as well, and then today I was going over the timeline for completing the financial plan so that we can get it into the government um, before the May 15th deadline. So um, I've done up the public notice for the hearing. Uh, the hearing will be held May 1st at 6 p.m. Uh, this notice will be advertised in the April 10th and 17th uh, issues of the newspaper. And then that means also that um, that means copies of the draft financial plan will be made available to the public on April 10th. So can it be changed? When we ran into some controversy last year, yes. Can it be changed from April 10th to May 1st? Yes. Because we have we have quite a few different irons in the fire right now. Yeah. That yes, it can. It and can. I'll, I'll make sure that we uh, stamp it draft. Okay, and may, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's not a whole lot of people that come and ask for it. Can we maybe take a list of people that come and get it? So if, if we make changes, we can phone those people and say, hey, we have an updated, just so we don't run into what we ran into last year. Sure. That would be good idea. Yeah. 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 Any other comments on anybody? Derek, do you have anything? Just one comment. comment uh, Council is aware that there's a very near future we're planning to get together to do an EMO plan on how to, an operation would go in case of a particular emergency. And I believe one of the priorities is the potential of a flood in our valley. So I think it's important for the community as a whole to know we're not waiting for the flood. We're planning, planning for one if it does come. So we hope to be well organized. Okay, we'll continue on with resolutions. Uh, the next has to deal has uh, I'm lost something. Okay, uh, election changing the contributions for elections. So what is the major change? The increased amount that uh, candidates are allowed to spend for their yeah, election the campaign. And then Councils had it all had a chance to look at it. Okay, so we have the motion moved by Councillor White. Second by Councillor Freeze and resolved that bylaw 4, 2018, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, prescribing election expenses and contributions be read a second time. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Okay. The motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Freeze and resolved that bylaw 4, 2018, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, prescribing election expenses and contributions be read a third time and be passed. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen, resolve that accounts as follow be hereby approved for payment. General accounts from check 22195 to 22141 for a total of 102342 and payroll account from check 4189 to 4195 for 99,24.54. Discussion, Councillor Jacobson. Checks number, uh, where does this start? 002223 to 25. Each of them are $75. What are those checks for? Who are the Oh, sorry, they're to Patty Hinkleman, Brendan Fedorcha, and Bill oh, Hunt. That was for the uh, recreation conference expenses. Oh, that's Probably meals. Yes. Okay. 
recreation connections, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. I'll just confirm. Okay. Memorial. Uh, check number 22229 to Gene's Telecom. I know what it's for, but it's just a question to Derek. Um, is that the lowest quote you can get on a, a VHF radio? Or is that for fairings? Yeah. Terry's responsible. <coughs> just, just to Gene's Telecom is for replacement of a VHF radio. Depending on the type of radio, that's pretty expensive radio for that price. Yeah, I, I wouldn't know if the guys were like, like just we just a two-way radio. I, yeah, I'm yeah. going to be honest. Yeah, I don't so know that's what it would be. They'd replace the radio unless it's through Darren. Yeah, it was for the fire department. Mm -hmm. And like, are we soliciting other quotes like from Imperial Radio or like Russell too? Russell and then Government Air Services. I'm sure that based on the needs for just a VHF radio, uh, there's better deals than that out there. Councillor Sapp. This uh, question to Julie here. I know there is an explanation for it, but it's check 22199. It says Manitoba Public Insurance, $2,575 for an MPI claim for vehicle damage. So that was, would that be a deductible or? No, that was the deductible is twenty five hundred. This was twenty five fifty or something. So we just paid for the damage. We just paid for the damage. Yeah. Something that one of our employees hit with a. No, it was a windrow that was placed up without putting the proper signage, and the car hit the windrow mid street. So normally, normally we would have a windrow in an intersection, but they decided to start that windrow mid street and didn't put up a sign. And that car railed that uh, window hard and caused that much damage. So is MPI deem us at fault on this? They deemed us 100% and JDS adjusters basically told us with this amount, pay it up. So we followed their advice. So what kind of employee coaching was done on that? Uh, it wasn't, not a new operator, but yeah, he was held aside and said when you change, and start your windows, you have to put out a sign. He was even up. You notice how serious this is? Yes. Goes in his record? We would go under his incident and incident report. Any other questions? All in favor of the resolution? The motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen, resolves Swan Valley Settlements and Immigration Services financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2017, be received. Discussion? All in favor? The motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen, resolves the following utility bills be added to the property tax roll. Uh, 201 Fifth Avenue South, 10285, 413 9th Avenue North, 13773, 111th Eighth Avenue North, 7269, uh, 105 Main Street West, 3716, uh, 113 Drew Avenue, 21277, 312 Centennial Drive North, 21054, uh, 109 12th Avenue South, 1874. Uh, 205 First Street South, 3757, 444 Kelsey Drive, $5.17, and 210 8th Avenue South, $20.49. Discussion? Yeah, have, have all these people been contacted? Some of these are pretty small amounts. I find it hard to believe somebody would come in to pay $5. Have they all been contacted multiple times? 
Yeah, usually what happens, I believe, is people have moved out and, you know, they no longer can be contacted and, you know, invoices are sent and come back in the mail and, yeah. Okay. I believe that uh, the utility clerk does pursue trying to get payment for each and every one. Some, some of those look like rental properties yeah. for the most part? Yeah. All in favor? Carry. The motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen, resolved that Chandra Chambers and Brandy Davidson be hired as casual customer service reps, effective April 3rd, 2018. Discussion? Isn't one of these already an employee? Wasn't she a lifeguard? Yeah. So she doesn't want to be a lifeguard no more? No, I think she wants to or do both. both? Okay. Yeah. All in favor? Okay. Motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor Fries, who resolved that Councillors Delorier, Jacobson, Morio, and White uh, receive the full day per diem rate and dinner meal allowance for April 4th and 5th while representing the town during negotiation with QP Local 851. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor Friesen, resolve the town approve the sale of one set of IOTEX 5000 series turnout gear the municipality of Bozeman, Minnetonis, and the sum of says seventeen hundred dollars. What's a new set worth? I did talk to Darren. Yeah. Uh, this this amount was uh, came about by a dealer. He had spoken a third party dealer. He said, and uh, the cost, the initial cost, was decreased by five percent for wear and tear when it was purchased. And he's already um, discussed with the Metonis Fire Chief this okay. summer, so that's why we left it. So this is just 5% less than new that's price? That's what he said, yeah. Oh, so that's not bad. I, I was looking if this is a good price. I'll put that on you guys there. Further be it resolved that all items be sold as is with no implied warranty and that the purchaser is required to ensure the items pass testing prior to use. Discussion? In favor? Money should go back to the fire department. Yeah. The motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor Friesen. Resolve the following building permit applications be received. Shape Unraw 1541B Main Street Basement Renovations $20,000. Uh, Jack and Winnie Dick 604 River Park Drive $50,000. Discussion? Favor, opposed, carried. The motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor Fries, and resolved that pursuant to section 152 3 of the Municipal Act, Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. We have some personnel matters to discuss for the community contract. All in favor?